From water sports to wildlife, this beach town in the Palm Beaches is full of history and hidden gems. I'm Frank Licari, and this is Jupiter. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.com for more information. So before all the boats and the condos and the amazing houses here, what was Jupiter before that? The lighthouse was the real first permanent settlement here in modern times, being finished in 1860. Wow. And it was several decades after that before we really got a town here. So uh, we are in the shadow of uh, what you call a large tree. But you said tree. Looks, this looks like multiple trees to me. There's a few places where you can see the roots hanging down like long strands of hair. And when those grab hold into the ground, that's it. They're going to turn into a whole extra trunk. That's, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, and there's a great story on why the tree is here. It commemorates the fact that the original keeper's house, here in this howling wilderness, three guys taking care of this lighthouse with no town around them, they lived in the house here. Right which, here? Right here, which tragically burned down in 1927. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me the banyan tree pushed them out. <laughs> Uh, who, who lives here? What's so, this about? This house was built by a guy named George Tyndall, and he built this house in 1892, and it's now the oldest surviving home in Jupiter. We even got some historic vegetation in the yard with these pineapples. They know what a pineapple on a Come banana looks Come to Jupiter, like. see our pineapples. <laughs> That's nice. Most people think when they hear Florida fruit, their first thing is, oh, it's oranges. Oranges, sure. But 100 years ago, pineapples. it was pineapples. And here I've been learning Florida. strawberries. We were the yeah. center for peppers. I mean, we were tomatoes, yeah, all sorts here. of stuff down here. That's what drew people down here is right. growing, the great growing seasons. This big bell is from Pennock Plantation. It was set right in the middle of it as the lunch bell, the dinner bell, yeah. and the end of the work day, and the volunteer fire alarm bell. Ever ring it? You ever just like when, on your own, when you're by nah. yourself, on the, you just come over here on the untied? Well, well occasionally quick... you have to watch people, they're like... Yeah, yeah, right? When you want to, I want to hear it. And we, we don't get a chance to Not hear today. it? Not today. Fine, Josh, whatever, ruin my fun. Whatever you, whatever. <laughs> It's a solid door, right? Good iron door. Yeah, yeah. How many stairs? 105 stairs to the top. Do people ever not make it? Sometimes they get to up to one of the landings and they say, you know, that's all for today. Oh, wow. This is an amazing view. We got our inlet here. The lighthouse is particularly useful for the people using our inlet, which is very treacherous. Before modern times, it, the lighthouse had nothing to do with the inlet, but here we are called a landfall light. All the shipping that is trying to go from the Gulf of Mexico around Florida through those comparatively narrow Florida Straits has to pass right by here. And we're actually east of Miami, east of Cape Canaveral. Easy to have a boat accident. I want to talk a little bit because we passed by the, the, the actual the, the lens. Yes, right? it's something called a Fresnel lens. We are very proud that of 13 first order lenses, the biggest kind, in America, we've got one of them, and it's still active. Uh, tell me about the paint. Uh, is there a special paint on the lighthouse? We have to use very special paint made in Germany so that the bricks can breathe out the, all the moisture that we get here in South Florida. The lens is from France. The paint is from Germany. The bricks are from? Bricks are brought down from New England. We're actually from New England. All right. that we're standing on a deck that has big white brackets holding up yeah. made out of Ming granite. Thank God. Uh, yes, this is a sturdy uh, structure. Very sturdy structure. So you can come out here and you can see pretty much all of the area, right? Yeah, it's in, 14 in miles to the horizon. Amazing. Getting ready to throw out the first pitch here at the Miami Marlins game as South Florida PBS explores spring training in Jupiter. And I've got the tools of the trade right here. I am getting ready to uh, do it up. It's not, it's not quite tobacco, but it'll work. So I have to imagine that Jupiter changes a whole bunch once spring training begins. There's a huge hustle and bustle going on around here especially with uh, the St. Louis Cardinals having a lot of people from the Midwest here. Right. Um, the Marlins, we have the local fan base, and we have over 150,000 people that come Is to that our right? games. 
So, Brian, we're at Roger Dean Stadium. You kind of grew up here, right? I mean, this is like, you've been here forever. Yeah, I played here in uh, for the first year of the stadium, actually, for the Jupiter Hammerhead. When did this uh, all start? 1998. After I retired, I came back here and got to manage. So I met my wife here. Um, you met your wife here? Yeah. So you went, you were, let me let me guess. You're on the field, right, with your tight pants on, and she goes, "Oh my God, I gotta I gotta meet that." I wish I could tell you that's exactly how it happened, but my mother-in-law worked in the ticket office and. Uh, oh come on! You know, did her mother approve right away, or did she, she like, did. "Oh, not no, that guy. I still, He's a terrible." I still think she likes me more than my wife does. Is so. that right? Hi there. So uh, I've been looking for Brian's uh, a mother-in-law, and I was told she was here. That's me. That's you? That yeah, is. You're Betty. I'm Betty. Uh, how's Brian as a son-in-law? I'm so lucky to have him in our family. He said that you you love him more than your daughter loves him. Uh, probably. Well, there you go. <laughs> Do you come here often? Every year. That wasn't a pickup line. I'm asking you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you come here often yet? Every, Every year. year. How long have you been following the baseball? Since I played in... Oh, look at you. Now, what position did you play? Were you, you, you're, you're tall. Yeah. I'm a pitcher. Yeah. Oh, can you, okay, so you're a pitcher. We're kind of crazy. All right, so here's All what's... Are kind well, of crazy. I need you. I'm throwing out the first pitch today. Oh, really? Yes. What do I do? Give me a little... Give me a little... What, what do you got for me? Aim high and to the right. High and to the right. My advice is to never stand on top of the mound. Never stand on top of the mound, yeah. which is exactly what I'm going to do. You're supposed to grip it across the seams because it makes it easier to grip the ball. All right. Keep my eye on the on the on the glove. Follow through. All right. I'm going to be throwing out the first pitch today. Did you know that? I did not. Know. Yeah. So now, do you see how your face changed? Yeah. So it's a big, it's a big, it's responsibility. A big responsibility. So yeah. you got any tips for me? Don't bounce it. Don't bounce it. Starting to get a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. I'm representing you. I'm representing you, the audience, and um, I take that I take that to heart. I take that as a very very big responsibility, and I hope I don't let you down today. Not bad. Appreciate it. No problem. There you go. That was fun. And right across the street from Roger Dean Stadium, you'll find Abacoa Town Center. It's a newish planned community built around an old concept. They built 3,000 residents here all around a main street so that people have a place to eat, shop, and hang out. It's a really nice community, very friendly atmosphere, and Abaco was what we were looking for uh, in our retirement year sure. because I, don't, I can do everything I want right here in downtown Abaco sure. and in Jupiter uh, within a few miles. Because everybody retires and decides to open up a restaurant <laughs> when they retire. Absolutely. You said, what would I want in my life that I would want around a lot and I could own? And you said beer. That's right. We and great food. Great food with a German flair. Uh, And here we are on the east side of Jupiter, nestled in between US-1 and the Intracoastal Waterway, you'll find Harborside Place, a place where you can go to eat lunch, breakfast, dinner, hang out with friends, bring the family, stroll the sidewalks, do a little shopping. And by the way, if you've got your own boat, you're lucky enough, you can dock it right here, and you're in the middle of everything you'll need to have a fun day in Jupiter. Let's go meet some of the locals. Here we are along this beautiful brand new stretch of A1A. We've got the lighthouse, the beautiful Jupiter lighthouse right off to our side. We've got three miles of dog friendly beaches that we get to be the stewards of. And we've just got the most amazing neighborhoods, just such a great place. For somebody who's never been to Jupiter, tell me the best thing about Jupiter. Laid back. Laid back. I just feel very relaxed being here. There's nothing hurried about it. Mm -hmm. The Tell food me. is delicious. Mm -hmm. The margaritas are great. You've had one or two, three maybe? Oh yeah. Good. Being on this side of Jupiter is not all about tropical drinks and fresh fish. Here at the Square Grouper you can enjoy live music and nightlife as you grab a cocktail, sit by the water, watch the sunset and enjoy everything that Jupiter has to offer. people uh, come to Jupiter for various reasons. One of the reasons is to be able to cruise down the intercoastal waterway and sometimes you can do it paddle boarding. But we're not just going to paddle, right? We're going to try to get you to do a little bit of yoga with that. Now, how many people do you, would you say you've instructed in the paddle board yoga? We probably put over 50,000 people on the Wow, water. but nobody uh, with the obviously physical uh, 
uh, uh, presence of this guy. Not your normal physique no, that no. you would normally. I'm expecting great things from you. Sure, sure, aren't we all? We want to make sure that we get you off the dock without a bump. Right. Most of the What's accidents, the bump? The What's bump, like bump on the head, bump ah, on the dock. Yes. We don't want to bump, bump we don't, you. We don't we like We want to keep that beautiful face, yeah, camera oh gosh, ready, sure. right? Well, I, I, I hate to tell you, just being on the dock, <laughs> I'm already feeling like I'm going to fall off. So that's going to be, be worse. Okay. You're going to be fine. All right. I promise. Okay. So what's, what do we do first? There's a paddle. There's a paddle and there's paddle a board, board. And that's where you came up with the name. Cool. And the only other requirement by the law yes. is to have a life vest. Do I get ankle floaties as well with no this or no? No ankle floaties. No. Do if I... not careful, we might put cement blocks. All right. All right. And from here, I want you to get familiar with the board. Be one with the ocean. Feel it out. All right, feel, feel it, it out. out. The sooner that we start to paddle, the easier it is to keep your balance. Gotcha. No, but I'll do it anyway. So I think you're going to be let's, fine. Let's figure it out. The beautiful aspect of yoga on water is about not being tied to anything and learning to go with the flow and go with the tides. Gotcha. So we say, as a yogi, if you can maneuver on the water and not worry about the obstacles, you can do the same thing in life. Push up position. Uh huh. Got it? Maybe. There's something very magical about doing sun salutation, honoring the sun on the water. Inhale, rise and open up the heart. Let the heart shine. How do you know I haven't fa fallen in yet? You're not falling in. You're going to drop the back right and you're going to rise into warrior two. Come on, Frank. You can do it. Hold on. You got this. You got this. I have confidence in you. I don't know that I do. You're a warrior. Woo! Bend that front knee. All right. Now, let's windmill down. Back into push-up position and down you go. See, you can do it. I mean... I'm a warrior. You are a warrior. That was cool. Tell me a little bit about the history here at Guanabanas. We opened in 2008. Before that, it was a kayak shop and a very small scale restaurant. They closed down, and that's when myself and my partners came on board. When people say, what's a cool spot to go, they all say Guanabanas, and that's, I guess, because of what you've done here. And that was the mission. When we first opened, the idea was we wanted a place, if you're from Florida, this is what should be here. When you come to Florida, this is what you're looking for. Obviously, you have a little bit to do with the food, right? The biggest things that, that we stand behind is the fact that we only use fish from the state of Florida. And one of the biggest missions that I know that they had and when we brought everything to the table almost 10 years ago was, you know, we wanted to be that outdoor place that everybody sees and everybody comes and have that, that enjoyable time. You've got families enjoying food. You've got sort of the bar crowd, the hangout after work crowd. Uh, you've got sort of the older generation enjoying their own little quiet time. It's just a very unique blend you have here. Yeah, we even do live music three days a week. So with that, we bring in a really young crowd. I have yet to meet anybody who doesn't like hanging out outside under sure. palm trees and under umbrellas sure. and tea. Yeah. Well, guys, this is uh, this is great. Congratulations Thank on you. yeah Thank and you. continued Hello. success. Jupiter has obviously a lot of a lot of parks, but tell us about this one. So Riverbend is really special. It's um, on the west side of Jupiter. It's about 680 acres of just wow. nature. Yes, trees, wildlife, birds. And adjacent to the park is Loxahatchee River Battlefield Park, which is about 60 acres of pretty much the same thing. So it's kind of you get two parks in one. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people come here just to kind of hike through the trails. Sure. And bike through the trails, run, jog. A lot of people kayak through Loxahatchee River. Yeah, and then you can get the kayaks here, right? And take them all yes, the way. Yes, you can. You can rent a kayak for the day. It's completely free to access. If you want to uh, have a picnic here, there's a picnic island. You can bring your horse and use the equestrian Are trails. Are you kidding? Yep. I can bring my horse? If you have a horse. I've been wanting to bring my horse somewhere, and now I know where to bring it. You can bring him to River, or him or her to Riverbend. Yeah. There's a couple other parks around, right? Uh, the the Burt Reynolds Park as well, Burt. named after a famous actor, friend yep. of ours. <laughs> So the river runs five miles, and right. then it comes into the Jupiter waterway, and then out into the ocean. So mm -hmm. I could technically, yep, if canoe I wanted, all the way, canoe all the way into the ocean. Yes. Yeah. Palm Beach County operates um, aquatic centers, recreation centers, beach parks, um, Du Bois Museum, and the lagoon there, and then River Bend and Loxahatchee River Battlefield Park. It's just like everything. It's the place to be, is what you're yes, saying, baby. It's everything. That's a great PR move. <laughs> nice work. That was awesome. Cool. Thanks very much. 
did this all come about? Well, this was a historic house built in 1898. This midden, or hill, is over 6,000 years old. The midden? The midden What's is the that hill about? that we're built on. Okay. And if you look as you come up the stairs, they're all tiny oyster shells. Oyster. They were very prominent in this area. So is there any style thing? The, the, the style of the home is a Jersey Shore style home. Is that right? The historic architect we consulted with, uh, Burt Bender from the Keys, suggested the 1930s period because the house was renovated so many times right. after the original owners were no longer here. Made uh, Harry and Susan, right? Harry what, and Susan. What made them choose Jupiter? Harry was here um, just as a pioneer. Harry had a pineapple plantation over on US Highway 1, one of his ways, again, of making money. And he disassembled that building, floated it down the river, reassembled it there, and that's where they lived while they were building this house in 1898. How long before we put this on Airbnb, though? Airbnb. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Gonna happen? I think <laughs> Although be... this would be a beautiful place to Wouldn't stay. It? You sit on the porch out there, and now it's heaven. Every great place to live always involves a vibrant arts community, and that brings us here to the west side of Jupiter to the Performing Arts Academy of Jupiter. This is Jesse Furman. Uh, Jesse, you've been teaching here how long? Uh, 14 years. 14 this year. years. Yeah. And you teach? I teach theater, teach acting, theater. and improv. Studio here has five dance studios, a theater, dance classes, theater classes, obviously, music classes yep. such as voice, guitar, private lessons, and now they do stuff like silk, which you can see some silk hanging. Which we're going to do. We're going to do a little routine. After we are. We're going to theatricalize. So uh, one of the perks of having your own television show is you get to do shameless plugs every once in a while. And uh, beside me, I have my good friends Travis Thomas and Jesse Furman. And together, we make uh, something called the Jove Comedy Experience. What's so unique about what we do? Well, you know, when you walk in, you fill out a suggestion form. And on the form are a lot of different ideas, so it automatically incorporates the audience into the show. Well, they're essentially, they're co-writers in our show, yeah. right? They give us Absolutely. ideas, and uh, we've, we've gotten some good reviews over the years. Oh, I'll take Horty. <laughs> uh, well, um, Horty, uh, I'll take the fragile. What have we been called? The funniest guys you've never heard of. Fun, and you still, still have it. Still yeah. true. That hasn't yeah. changed. Uh, uh, the A-team of comedy. A-team of comedy. Team, new yeah. times. And, and, the, and the most fun you can have in Jupiter. So we had a couple that used to come to the shows, and all of a sudden, the husband was gone. We never saw him. We found out that they got divorced. And in the divorce uh, proceedings, they actually put the joke comedy shows yeah. into their divorce papers. And basically, the the wife, the wife got the, the got wife the got the job. So yeah. we never saw yeah. the husband again. That's so how good we are. that's how good we yeah. are. Yeah. We, we we drive people to divorce, but at least one of them sticks around. We really are good. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Just down the street from Jupiter, Riviera Beach offers sandy beaches and water adventures. Whether you're diving, sliding, or just chilling. So dive right in and check out the 800 foot long snorkeling trail near the Blue Heron Bridge. It's a rare opportunity to see a diverse array of sea life and you may just catch a glimpse of an octopus, spotted ray, or a starfish. But another beloved sea creature is the star of this attraction. Manatee Lagoon and FPL Eco Discovery Center is a gathering spot for the gentle giants. Visitors can explore the educational exhibits and from the observation deck, they can get a unique view of the sea cows as they congregate in the warm waters. For an adventure offshore, you can charter a dive boat, a deep sea fishing trip, or a dinner cruise at the Riviera Beach City Marina and be in deep waters in just minutes. Paddleboard and kayak rentals are also available. Finally, you can bring the whole family to the Rapids Water Park. Founded in 1979, this 30 acre landmark attracts kids of all ages to experience over 40 water slides and attractions, including a wave pool and a lazy river. The park is open daily during the spring and summer months, and on weekends through the fall. Now, how many people do you get that come through here? We get about 150,000 visitors a year. Are you What? Yeah. This is Taya. Well, these particular bears were about 20 pounds when they came to us, oh, so see. considerably smaller than what you're yeah, seeing here. Okay. But even at that size, still incredibly dangerous. Sure. Oh my goodness, look oh, at yeah. this. 
a lot of people, uh, sometimes they'll say, oh, it's like a zoo, but it's not a zoo, right? What we are actually is we're a wildlife hospital. So we take in over 5,000 animals every year. And the goal is to return to the wild. And we're successful with about 40% of the cases that we see. It's amazing. This is Hoot. Hoot, the great horned owl. Yeah, this is the largest owl that we have here in Florida. And he would, what, swoop down on you and grab you with his, with his talons? If you were a small mammal. Yep. Yeah. If you were a little rodent, something like that, rabbit. Does the owl have a predator that goes after them? Um, unfortunately, what we normally see with these guys is human-related injury. No, they're, right. they're in flight. It's dark out because these guys are, of course, nocturnal. Sure. And they end up getting hit by a car. Sure. How much do you think he weighs, though? It's uh, 11 pounds. Is that, well, you know you what it is? You need to work out. It's the claws. I do need to work out. <laughs> no. It's only about two pounds. Are you kidding? No. Well, then the claws are just taking the circulation out of yeah, my hand. that's it. That's yeah, what that's it is. That's all it is. It's the okay, claws. It's okay. not the weight. What's really amazing, what he's showing off now, is his neck ability. I, you see him go uh, all yeah, the way I back. I did. I did. Do a lot of yoga? I do a lot of yoga. Yeah. These guys are permanent residents here. Unfortunately, they were taken from their mom. Or how would I know it's a bobcat? Like, where did the bob come in? Where's it's, the bob? Well, the bob is the tail. Short tail, but if you look at the back of their ears, right. they look like they have eyes in the back of their head. They're those big white oh, yeah, spots in the that. back of their ears. Um, if you encounter one in the wild, I mean, if for some reason it's acting strangely. Which is um, what? Twitching? Which is aggressive. Doing, doing you know, puppetry? Instead of running away from it, it runs at you. Oh, that's strange. <laughs> then definitely give us a call. You guys have a unit that you go out and pick them up? We have a volunteer unit. Majority of the animals are brought in by the public, but then, you know, there's a lot of funding that's needed of to course. actually take care you of them. Because you don't charge here. No, we don't charge any admission here. It's all free. All right, that's cool. Uh, what else can we see? You like alligators? Yeah, let's see some alligators. Let's do it. Let's do it. Obviously, you've got the uh, the cranky one. <laughs> that's that a crocodile one. for That's you. a crocodile. This is a crocodile. So this is yep. good. So the difference between the croc and the alligator. If you hold them up kind of like oh, this. Oh, wow, hi there. You'll see that's how pointy a, the crocodile wow, is. Wow, that's a great dental program. <laughs> now, and if you look at the alligator, too, when, when their mouth's closed, yeah. look how he's smiling at it you. It is a cute one. Yeah. Like, it's deceivingly cute. Yeah. If, if the croc would close his mouth, uh, all his teeth show. Um, this is probably as big as you, they'll get before I can stop holding them. i got bigger ones if you want. No, I'm good. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Now that I've worked up an appetite, it's time to pay a visit to this Jupiter resident. Chef Zainab is a specialist in vegan cuisine and performs cooking demos all around town. And she's offered to show me one of her favorite recipes. Well, Chef Z, I am in my element right now. All right. Because I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So we're going to make a healthy coconut curry stew today with um, quinoa on the side. It's an African dish. I grew up with being African Lebanese, mm -hmm. so I get all, most of all my stuff organic sure. and stuff like that. Are you and farm to table kind of chef? I am. Uh, do? Okay. I think this is. I think this is good. So you just cut it into like little cubes because it's going to cook completely. Okay. So we just put it right in the right. pot. Maybe. You do the cutting. I'll just. <laughs> but I, I'm pretty good with it. But you're a lefty. Yeah, I am a lefty. Okay. Is that right? a left-handed knife? Um, no, it's not. It's not. It's no. an extra spice. But yeah, I'm just gonna put the um, coconut oil yeah, in the pot. I need all the seasoning and everything to um, marinate together. Yeah. Can you smell it already? I can. You can smell the coconut, yeah. the garlic, the I wish you guys ginger. could smell what I'm smelling. I wish we had a smell TV. Yeah. Smell a TV with It's coming. Garlic. It's coming. I'm going to have the spices in now. Yeah. What are we putting in here? So I have the cumin in, and I'm going to put curry. And you're just you're just eyeballing it. I just eyeball yeah. everything. That's a real chef. Because my grandmother said when you eyeball stuff, it comes out good. Oh, Absolutely. man. Look mm, at this. Look at the color. Isn't it yeah. good? Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's a potpourri of Colors. Oh yeah. Delicious. Did Delicious. You, did you know? <laughs> We're gonna add in the coconut milk. This is coconut milk. The coconut right. milk again. Now we get to um, the quinoa. Actually, this is pretty much it's done. Yeah. Good. Chef Z, you are a pleasure in the kitchen. Thank you. Yeah, this was a pleasure for me. Not only known for its fishing, its outdoor parks, its restaurants, but also one of the most renowned regional theaters in the country, uh, Jupiter boasts the Maltz Jupiter Theater, and the man behind it, Andrew Cato, is responsible for most of it, right? <laughs> well, we have an incredible team here, but... But it's you, let's be honest. There, there has to be someone at the top, <laughs> That's I guess, right. yeah. <laughs> so, so how did this all start? Give me the history here. Fort Reynolds had this uh, theater as a dinner theater originally in 1979, mm -hmm. and very successfully ran it with um, an amazing team, including many of his star friends right. here for 10 years. Um, and then the theater actually went to a couple other um, 
companies before it fell into complete disrepair. And then in the early uh, 2000s, 2003, um, with uh, a number of board members who wanted to make sure that this was not left as a cultural wasteland, uh, Milton and Tamar Maltz put up a major gift to uh, make it the Maltz Jupiter Theater as it currently is now. Tell us your history here, because it's, it's incredible. So you go back with this. Well, sure. I mean, I was a waiter here in the Burt Reynolds Dinner Theater days, which I'm I'm actually very proud uh, that that happened. And you were, what, five at the time? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. So it was a wonderful training ground for a kid um, who, you know, didn't go surfing. Sure. Um, I came to the theater. Where do you see the theater in five to ten years? What's 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 the next thing? What are we doing? Are we building a hotel? Are we building a malt <laughs> hotel? Well, we have some surprises <laughs> in there. Sure. Um, ultimate goal would be able to um, develop new authors, new voices in the theater. I think sure. it's the obligation of regional theater to create um, something that can be um, explored in the national landscape and that it's not just for Floridians. It'll go on and have an additional life. Sure. Well, I mean, you're doing great work here. Obviously, the space is growing. It's a, it's a staple of the town. It's meant so much. When you step down, who's taking over? <laughs> you are. As you can tell from our time in Jupiter, this little beach town is all about quality of life. Whether it's learning history at the Jupiter Inlet Lighthouse or catching a Marlins spring training game at Roger Dean Stadium, Jupiter is a great place to discover, especially if dockside dining, world-class theater, and great shopping are on your to-do list. We hope you enjoyed getting to know Jupiter, Florida, and we hope that you'll join us on our next trip on the town. Do we have a name for this one? Harry. What is it? Harry. You know that for a fact, or are you just making that up? I'm making it up. You're making it up. That was really quick of you. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.com for more information.